And there we have it, Real Madrid win their 11th Champions League trophy at the hands of a Cristiano Ronaldo penalty kick, despite the fact that he'd done probably nothing throughout the game. But I'm going to share my thoughts on that when we get towards it. I am dying of a cold, but it didn't stop me as I went to the bar with Jason, my good mate Scott, who came in from Scotland to watch it with us. And uh, we celebrated because it was an enjoyable game. And if you're tuning in, thinking you're here and I'm going to announce the winner of the Rock by Ronaldo headphones straight away, you're drastically mistaken. You have to stay tuned to the end of the clip and listen to our on-point analysis, and I will tell you who the lucky winner is. Completely chosen at random. Don't hate me. Jason Rubin was the one who chose that. I gave they him can, a list. They can, they can technically also just go to like the eight-minute mark. Yeah, they'll probably just click it. <laughs> just click. Um, so, <laughs> one uh, ended, finished one-one regulation time. A, a, almost an exact replica of the Champions League final in 2013, except roles were switched. Atletico took the lead. Ramos's last-minute goal. Uh, forced extra time and then they went on, Real Madrid went on and demolished them. This time it was a Ramos goal, slight inclination of offside. Uh, he was just a little bit ahead of both Savage and Godin and he just managed to squeeze the ball in from a uh, flick on from Gareth Bell. Real Madrid started very well. I think that they took the game to Atletico Madrid and posed the question as to, all right, you're fantastic at defending, but what are you going to do when your backs are against the wall? And that was a question that Diego Simeone's men struggled to answer. Until the second half. But thoughts on the first half. Yeah. Real Madrid were the uh, better team, we felt. First half thoughts, I thought that Real Madrid was beating Atletico Madrid at their own game. They were playing defensively sound. They yeah. were uh, strong on the back four. Uh, I also have to give credit to Oblak, who, uh, Oblak, because, my God. Oblak. Oblak. Could have been 3-0. Easily in the 35th minute. But credit to Oblak, because, my God, he's been doing that the entire Champions League and during the La, La Liga season. It was pretty phenomenal to watch. All right. Uh, on addition to that, uh, I'm going to state this now. We're probably going to devote Pepe to an entire second clip in the memes and tweets. Yeah, so we, we so can't we spend get, it. So if we don't spend too much time on Pepe here, wait about an hour, it will be up at that time. We have lots of things to discuss about Pepe's game. Pepe's Oscar winning performance. Um, <laughs> so, tactically, I don't like to toot my own horn, but toot fucking toot! I stated before, I stated in tactics, Diego Simeone has a secret weapon. His name's Carrasco, but it's not just the way that he plays him. It's the way that Atletico Madrid introduce him, and they need him when they need to start chasing the game. So they play with those banks of four that when they are not conceding and they can squeeze that early goal, that works so well. Mm -hmm. Phenomenally well for them. But as Real Madrid proved, when you take the game to Atletico and you pose the question, uh, those players become redundant. Fernandez, redundant. And they took him off at halftime. I told these guys at the bar, they'll take him off at halftime and they'll bring on Carrasco. And what that will do... Carrasco is a talented player, right? I don't think he's a game changer all the time, but he Fast. was in this game, very quick, and he's he's positive. That's the best thing about it. But what did he do? He allowed for Sal Niguez to push higher up the part. He allowed for Koke to push higher up the part, and he basically, in his own way, took Atletico's game to Real Madrid. And as a result, they got a penalty kick almost immediately into the second half. Griezmann, who I would have put my life mortgage dog on, smashed off the cross, off the bar, and then I'm thinking. Atletico are still going to come back. Like, they're still a fair play to Griezmann. Bounce right back. Many players had every right to crumble after, after a decision like that. Like, Champions League final, the and highest he game. he responded with his penalty kick. So, uh, oh, he took that. In, I stated, in actual PKs, yeah. Yeah, I stated he would take the first penalty, and that's a mark of a very mature footballer to step up and do that. So, moving forward, they started to press Real Madrid a little further back. Real Madrid were decently composed. I didn't think they, they completely shattered their game plan. Pepe became a little bit more irrational and was moving higher up the park. Ramos dove in a couple of times because that's what Griezmann was there to do. Griezmann was there to pose the question to Ramos and say, come with me, like check out with me and leave that back four exposed a little bit more. But Casemiro did a great job of patrolling as he does. Casemiro allowed for Modric to be the playmaker in the first half. But then as soon as you introduce Carrasco and you start to push Madrid a little bit further back, Modric was somewhat nullified in the second half. He went a little bit non-existent. He followed the same road as Ronaldo went when they were just struggling to try and find their way back into the game. But they still held well at the back and I didn't see an immediate threat until Griezmann started to move outside his comfort zone. He wandered into Real Madrid's left side area mm -hmm. and that's where Juan Fran was able to overlap. And what a goal it was to bounce mm -hmm. back. And we will talk about means and tweets, but what about Carrasco's celebration? Talk about making your mark yeah. on the Champions League final, laying a sloppy one. On the girl and the crowd. On the misses. Uh, we're going to throw that video also in the memes and tweets. So just more reason to come back for more, more reason to come back later today. Uh, all right, so let's get to another one because uh, they sub Ronaldo in for the fifth penalty kick. <laughs> Great decision to die. Really fantastic. Mature. Very good decision. Uh, I still don't understand why soccer, oh, Jesus, football players, sorry guys, take off their shirts 
as a celebration. It's Ronaldo. It is better celebrations. Uh, you can slide. You can do the airplane. That's like my drunk celebration. You can do the Klinsman. Hey, what's the Klinsman? You can like slide down on your slide stomach. stomach. Oh, the Ravenelli. No, but uh, uh, I actually don't think Ronaldo deserves to be, uh, get like the, the Twitter reaction was, oh, he's gone, he's missing, he hasn't been on the park all night. I actually thought it was almost like yeah. a sort of a decoy being used. But let me pull out my big hose. Don't take that sexually. What do you, what do you let me pull out the hose to put out the fire that is uh, this constant media circulation of uh, discrediting Cristiano well, Ronaldo. He score because the only that. way to measure Cristiano Ronaldo's ability is through statistics, because that's what we've been growing up understanding. My God, Cristiano Ronaldo had 25 goals in three games. That's kind of the statistics that we throw around. And you turn that's, off your Xbox, that's that. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's the only me that's the only amount of uh, I would say goals that Ronaldo scores in order to satisfy the media. Because Ronaldo, how many times this season? Oh, he doesn't score away from home. He bangs in. Goals after goals, and you're just like, can you just stop with this ridiculousness? Bleacher Report run a picture halfway through the game, uh, stating missing Cristiano Ronaldo. It was all funny. It was in good fun, but it's just like I looked at it and I'm like, this is exactly what the problem is with this media: is that the only way they can measure Cristiano Ronaldo's ability to play good is if he scores or if he or if he has an assist. So it's no surprise that those uh, same people probably went, ah, well. Ronaldo stepped up because he scored the penalty. No, he didn't have a good game, whether or not he scored that penalty. But I don't measure Ronaldo solely on his ability to score goals. I think Cristiano Ronaldo, in the first half, worked well defensively. Uh, he acted as a decoy many times, pulling out wide left to allow for Gareth Bale to make those runs in the middle. And Gareth Bale was phenomenal in the first half, along with Modric. And that's, that's, these are the small roles that Zidane's probably putting into Ronaldo's head because... For all we know, we didn't think that Ronaldo was 100%. He didn't look 100% to me. I'm not making excuses for him. But his his ability to contribute to his team doesn't need to be quantified solely on how many goals he scores. Yeah, I agree with that. I used to uh, criticize Ronaldo for scoring seven goals against a, a, a crap La Liga team, bottom yeah. of the table team. But no, I mean, uh, a great example of that is just a quick resurgence of how important Ronaldo is. Uh, Wolfsburg, don't forget, Real Madrid yes. was knocked out of the Champions League altogether until he scored a hat-trick against Wolfsburg. And uh, single-handedly, Carried them, them yeah. to the next round, to where they prevailed once again, and then of course they won the Champions League final. Uh, I do feel a bit for Simeone. Oh, so do I. Just because of the celebration Simeone would have had if Atletico would have won would have been legendary. Yeah, he would have been legend. Wait for it. Dare he would have put himself. He's already in that category, by the way. And this is the same thing. It's such a harsh reality that is this world of football. I had a conversation yesterday with another media pundit about whether or not Barcelona's season was a, was a success. And uh, I said it was because they won a domestic double. And, and they lost out in the Champions League, right? And this is where I didn't understand his argument as to means that it wasn't a successful season because if they won the Champions League, they would have been considered the best ever team ever, ever, ever to play on this earth because they would have been the first team ever to go back-to-back -back trebles and won the Champions League back-to-back. Yeah. -back. So how can you honestly make the argument that it wasn't a successful season when they were only missing out on one trophy so that means that it was either all in and it was the, the most uh, outrageous amount of success possible or it was a failure. It doesn't make any sense. It's just we, it's a fabricated way that we try to make sense of this beautiful game and that if the best team don't win everything, then they're not the best team. So Simeone, on the other hand, has quarters of the budget that uh, Barcelona and Real Madrid has. He discarded Bayern Munich and Barcelona, easily the two best teams in the competition at that time, to get to the final. It's a harsh reality to face that he Drew. didn't win. And Drew him for yeah. 120 minutes. Exactly. It's a harsh reality to face the fact that he didn't win the competition. Right. Does it discredit him as a manager? No. He's still the best manager uh, this season for me in Europe. He's going to leave with nothing in his trophy, trophy cabinet. And people will make the easy argument as to say, well, didn't win anything. What can he show for it? But I think that what he has done for Atletico, again, is he's proven that he can make, they can mix it with the best without having all the resources and all the players that these teams have and the money and the backing behind it. And I think that he, he is alive and, uh, and heartbeat of that team. I would hate to see him leave on this note. There's always next year. But again, this is the only tournament that Diego Simeone just can't seem to win for this team. Yeah, so uh, it is a harsh day. way to go out, but it's the only way that this game is going to be settled on a final note. No one was going to score an extra time. They were dead. They were just dropping like flies. Do and that wasn't something. just Pepe. Yeah, people were poking them with sticks. Can you pick yourself up? But uh, you're working at that intensity for that yeah. uh, amount of time because both teams were in a vigorous chess match where they had to move mechanically to shut each other down and it was, it was going to be draining. So I stated as soon as it went into extra time, this is going to penalties. Like, I just can't see anyone else scoring. Um, and it did. And Cristiano Ronaldo leaves with the very same ending as to what he did in 2013. They don't play necessarily well, but he ends up with his shirt off. It sounds like <laughs> your Saturday night.
You might not have done well when you were out, but you leave with your shirt off. I look better than Ronaldo with the shirt off, so I'll take that. Debatable. Here's take in the that. comments. Look, we're oh, both wearing white. wait. No. Pull them, Jason. Oh, I get to tell I'll give you. A, I'll give you a draw. Uh, I was announced the winner of the Ronaldo <laughs> headphones. It's really an honor. Seriously, thank you. I, I, I followed Francis on Instagram. Then I unfollowed him, and then I followed him again. No, seriously, who is the winner? The Max winner is, by the way, completely chosen at random. Thank you, everyone, for being involved in this. It was an overwhelming amount of interaction uh, involved. And don't go anywhere if you didn't win. There will be more giveaways in the future. Plenty more model. TYT swag and all that stuff. But these lovely Bluetooth Rock by Ronaldo headphones will be going to into the happy hands of Instagram name Gold Dot George. And as from what I can see on his private profile, which don't go and harass him. Poor guy. He's just won the competition. George Oliver, he has won. So George Oliver, I want you to hit me in the DM <laughs> and uh, let me know where I can send these lovely headphones to you and they will be finding their way into your hands. So if you're a Real Madrid fan, this will add to your already emphatic day. Mm -hmm. Or if you are a Real uh, Atletico Madrid fan, maybe it can drown out some of the bullshit from all the other people shouting at you. So uh, it's a win -win. thanks for participating and stay tuned for the means and tweets. Coming very soon to IT Sports, I have to go and blow my nose somewhere.